Hey guys, this is Curtis Alexander. I'm a pharmacist. In this video, I'm going to be covering the side effects that you can see from hydrochlorothiazide. And from this point forward, I'm just going to call it HCTZ. It's way easier to say, way easier to spell. But um, so hydrochlorothiazide or HCTZ is an old school diuretic. Uh, you get rid of water and they use it primarily to treat blood pressure. Now, as I do in a lot of these side effect videos, I like you to know what the drug does in your body. It's going to make more sense uh, to understand the side effects. So, sodium is normally reabsorbed by your kidneys. What hydrochlorothiazide does, HCTZ, is it blocks this reabsorption of sodium by your kidney. And what that leads to is your body's going to get rid of more sodium, it get, gets rid of more potassium, gets rid of more. Um, hydrogen and the end result is you have a diuretic that you're going to pee out more water. That's what is going to happen. And the end result from that is when you're peeing out more water, you have less fluid, your blood pressure will go down. Okay, now like I said, that also has some potential side effects in the body. Okay, so the first one that we worry about with HCTZ actually is not the first one, but the first one I will cover is skin toxicity, and that means photosensitivity. Some people will go out in the sun and they're going to sunburn easier and sometimes it can be serious. So the thing to know about it is it's not dose related. Um, it can happen at a low dose, it can happen at a high dose, and there is no way to predict it. So when people say, well, will this happen? I don't know. You know, we, we really don't know. The thing, if you take it long term, there's... It's a concern, there's no evidence, but the squamous and basal cell carcinoma risk may go up and it's based off your total usage. So if you've been taking hydrochlorothiazide for years, you may be at increased risk for that. So make sure that you and your doctor are aware that you're getting regular dermatology checkups. Okay, next thing we worry about, obviously we talked about what HCTZ does with your sodium, your potassium, your hydrogen, those are your electrolytes you can get electrolyte disturbances, okay? We can see potassium go low. We can see magnesium go low. Obviously, we see sodium go low. You can also see an increase in your calcium levels. Not a good thing because we worry about this in folks who have histories of arrhythmias, so you want to be careful with HCTZ in that case. Um, if it's going to happen, again, these are side effects. We don't know if they will happen, but if they do, the potassium drop usually happens quicker. The sodium can happen quickly or it can happen years after you're taking HCTZ. The people that are higher, at higher risk that I would caution for electrolyte disturbances, are you taking a high dose? Are you taking loop diuretic? So loop diuretic is like Lasix, okay? Are you experiencing any GI issues, nausea, vomiting, those sorts of things? we worry about your potassium dropping even quicker and, and more substantially. Do you have congestive heart failure? We also worry about it in folks uh, with a drop in magnesium if they consume a decent amount of alcohol, okay? Because you can see those drops in magnesium. Um, actually, if you're drinking more water, it puts you at risk for electrolyte disturbance. It's kind of another subject, but you essentially, you're diluting your your body's electrolytes. You're already losing them and then you dilute them more by drinking a bunch of water. Um, old age, not old age, <laughs> 65 or older is a risk factor. For sodium depletion, women are at a higher risk. Um, women and over 65 also at an increased risk of, of seeing their calcium go up. So um, electrolyte disturbances, you make sure your doctor is monitoring your labs while you're on hydrochlorothiazide, okay? This is an interesting one, gout risk. Your gout risk can go up, and what's going on is when you take HCTZ, you see an increased reabsorption by your body of uric acid, and you're eliminating less in your urine, so you, ha you can have a buildup of uric acid, which leads to gout. Again, it can happen after a week of use, it can happen after a year of use. Not really a timeline on this one. What puts you at risk? Are you taking a higher dose of hydrochlorothiazide? Um, 
say 50 milligrams, that would be considered a pretty substantial dose. How long have you been taking it? The longer you've been taking it, the more at risk you are. Also, do you have a personal or even a family history of gout? You'd want to be careful. Okay, one of the things we always used to do is if you had a sulfa allergy, we would caution you like, listen, you can get an allergic reaction to HCTZ and that can happen. But I put it in question marks because there was a big retrospective study. They went back and looked at this and the sulfa allergy thing, there's a lot of debate over this. I still tell people, hey, if you have a sulfa allergy, just know um, there can be this reaction. But on the flip side, people can get a hypersensitivity reaction, meaning rash, swelling, those sorts of things, even an anaphylactic throat closing up, difficulty breathing without a sulfa allergy. So I put question marks there because I still think it's important to mention that that could be a cause, but it's up for debate. And lastly, the big one I want you to know about is eye problems and what I mean by that. First of all, these tend to be temporary eye problems. If you start to notice you get myopia or nearsightedness, um, that can be the hydrochlorothiazide, the HCTZ doing that. Also, it's been linked to acute angle glaucoma. Again, if you start to develop these eye issues, usually when you stop the HCTZ, they tend to go away. So that's the good thing about it. Um, the other thing, it does not tend to be related to the dose. And we really don't know why. You know, people are always shocked when they're like, well, why is it happen? It's like, we don't always know. Um, so at any rate, if you've taken HCTZ, what has been your experience? Mention it in the comments. It's helpful for me. It's helpful for other people watching the video. And I just like to know. So mention it in the comments as always. Like, subscribe is always helpful. I hope the video was helpful. And until the next one, thank you.